Hey YouTube, what's up? Welcome back. We are going to be doing something a little fun today. I'm going to be doing my makeup um, how I do it now and how, versus how I used to do it. We are going to be doing circa 2006-7. I will put the picture up here that I found that I felt kind of best represents how I used to do my makeup. Um, and fortunately it was a look that I did when I was going out at night with my friends. So that would have been how I would have like really done it, <laughs> which is so different than how I do it now. I don't necessarily think that it was bad. It's just different. So I got the idea for this video via another YouTuber. Her name is Yua Lee and I will put her link to her video down in the comments below. Uh, you should definitely go check it out. It was really cool to see how she did, how she's changed doing her makeup. Um, the, the years in between, oh, oh gosh, I don't know, 13 years, you know. <laughs> ah. So without further ado, if you're interested to see how I used to do my makeup. Hi Shiloh, you probably have muddy feet. So if you're interested to see how I do my makeup now versus how I used to do my makeup, then just stay with us. Let's get going. I just can't let you go. Lord knows that I've tried to. You said I was the only one. We are filming today on my iPhone because I was having issues with my HDMI cable for my camera. So... I don't have like a lens to let more light in or anything, so we are a little dark, but I will try to make the best of it. <laughs> Dogs got locked out. <laughs> first things first, I always use primer now. I got a band-aid, you guys. I'm so sorry. We were taking down our Christmas lights yesterday and I cut myself on a strand of light somehow. I think that there must have been a broken bulb or something. Probably happened in the blizzard. So I probably wouldn't have gotten cut if we'd taken them down before the blizzard, but you know, the weather has not been so great. It's been a rough winter. So I'm starting off with the Smashbox Primerizer April. If you see this, this is a great, actually your daughter said that she uses this too. This is a really great primer. It'll do even more favors when you move to South Carolina because it has hyaluronic acid in it. So, yeah. Uh, how do you like a dog hair in my mouth? I don't even get it. And now they're laying at the door. Look at that big old mug. Big old mug. Okay, go on. <laughs> kind of. They smell like wet dogs. Okay, primer. I did always use an eye primer back then. So we will throw that on. Now, oh, the left side of my face already feels so much better because I have primer all over it. Primer either wasn't a thing back then or I just didn't know about it. <laughs> but I always used a clear one and it was always the Mary Kay one for like a decade. Mary Kay was basically my introduction to makeup anyways. And so like all of my first like legit and my first makeup brushes was a Mary Kay set and it came in like this roll. Um, so yeah, that's where I got that. Okay, what are we gonna do next? Foundation. Now this is kind of perfect because like I have a little bit, my tan is still here. It's wearing off a little bit. I work out for four or five days a week and so it wears off a little, a little quick. So, but I'm gonna use my tan shade of foundation and I'm using the Makeup Forever HD stick. This is in the shade Y415, Y325, 15 is my light shade. And then for um, my then shade, I'm going to be using Vanilla and the Too Faced Born This Way. It's kind of perfect that I'm using a lighter shade because tanning is not something that I knew about or did or it was only like drugstore stuff either back then or I don't know but so I'm gonna use two different brushes to help me get through this um but yeah so Mary Kay 
Okay, can I just tell you guys something? This is like my third time trying to film this video. So <laughs> the first time I was like just getting started and then my husband was like, I really want to get out of the house and go do something. And so I was like, okay, you know what? Like he feels cooped up, like let's just get out. And so I abandoned filming the rest of the video. Then the second time I filmed it, I filmed the whole thing. And then when I um, put it on my computer, I realized that I had a sound issue. I thought I had pre-checked it, but apparently not well enough. And the hum was so bad. I was like, this is not editable. I cannot put this up, even though it was already done, everything. So it took me a while of doing all the um, testing, whatever, I don't know, testing to figure out where the problem was coming from. And it's that cable. I have another one on the way, but it's not here yet. And I'm not gonna just not film. Okay, so concealer. Concealer is not a thing that I did back then. I don't know if that's just because it wasn't recommended to me or, I mean, I was a lot younger for sure. So I probably didn't need it really, but um, sister needs it now right so I went in with my NARS concealer and I'm using the Milani conceal and perfect stuff is amazing <sighs> gonna go in with a beauty blender it just makes everything creaseless so like even if you mix it with something that does typically crease like my NARS isn't perfect but it makes it creaseless for sure oh my dogs are just like laying here on the floor they're so funny they're so needy. Okay. By the way, if you're curious, I got the headband um, with the facial steamer that I mentioned in my Amazon favorites. It's so, it's pretty cute. It's a little, it's a little tight and I have a tiny head. I'm taking my Real Techniques um, sculpting brush and this is an Anastasia con Conceal contour stick in mink, I believe. Yeah, in mink. And I like to apply the product indirectly by taking the brush directly to the stick. And then to my face, bronzer, con contours certainly didn't exist back then, circa 2006, seven or whatever, whenever that was. There is like a patch forming and that is really weird. Like that is not happening. This patch happening? Yeah, con contour came way later. But so like I was saying, most of my make up anything from back when is from Mary Kay. I mean, how I applied anything came out of like their little catalog and stuff. And I was like, all I knew I had hooded eyes and I just took all of their tips from it. Okay, so I'm gonna use Anastasia, Anastasia Brow Wiz. I just kind of just generally fill in. I have quite a bit of brow, so I don't typically need to do a lot to them and that's literally usually all that I need to do to them and this is a medium brown that I'm using here now here's where things get real fun I was like and the girl told me well you have black hairs just take some black eyeshadow hmm. now it doesn't look the worst right but it doesn't look the best either and one reason why and it's why we go for like waxy or pomade products, products specifically made for brows, is because they have in those waxes and stuff, it'll give you a little bit of shine into your brows. Because when you use just a matte black or brown or whatever shadow, it makes your brows matte. And sisters, our brows are not naturally matte, okay? So brows are done definitely looking different <laughs> one's definitely standing out more than the other and in my opinion not for good reason <laughs> I would never have anyone do this now but you know what the the more you do the more you know so that's fine that is fine all right, let's do a little setting powder. I always, always use my Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder underneath the eyes. And I almost always, I'll either use a sponge or I'll use my Real Techniques setting brush. And then I just take that underneath. 
since I've already put on all of my cream products. And then I will tap out anything on my eyelid, go to there. I don't think I did anything, no. I did primer and then eyeshadow right away. Now, it's not totally required to put a powder on your eyelid after primer. It's totally preferential. You can make your shadows work just fine. Ugh, this side of the face just feels so much better. Put on a layer of bronzer. This is just a big bronzer brush. I got Sephora on the sale page. I, I shop for brushes on the um, clearance sale page quite a bit. Their brushes come up on there actually a lot and it was a huge discount. Now I have like a square chin at the bottom and I like to minimize that. So I try to just ever so slightly chop off that corner. It, I'm looking really dark in the camera, I feel like, but it's not that much in person. But you know what? I'm not gonna film this a fourth time and I don't wanna like have to keep having this on my to-do list. I didn't even use an all over face powder back then. You know, no bronzer, highlighter did not come, did not exist yet in my life. So I'm just gonna take some blush. This is a Sonia Kashuk blush in sunset number three. Now it's the closest to what I used back then and what I used back then the most was, um, and I think it still exists, is, oh, she bright. Um, it's like an orange brick blush from Mary Kay, of course, because like all my stuff was Mary Kay because I was totally like sucked into the thing. It's like, I'm sorry, but no one brand is the end all of all cosmetics or skincare. Like you don't have like the monopoly on the market for being the best. Um, it's just not true. And that's actually why I went to Sephora and I didn't go to um, become a Mac artist. I just really wanted to be able to play with more brands. I could have made a lot more money if I'd become a Mac artist, but I really wanted to be able to play with more. So we're gonna do blush. I'll just use the other side of my brush. This is a real technique. I love, if you can't tell, I have a lot of their stuff and I have a lot of other brushes too, but their stuff just is so affordable. And um, this is actually the blush I wore for my wedding. And it is called what? Blushing? Blushing all day? Blush all day? Blush all day. It's a Pro Longwear MAC blush. I'm going to take a little bit of this Ciate setting powder that I got in my FabFitFun box. Ooh, it's so hard to only do it to one side of my face. Black liner to my tight line. And what you really want to try to do is get it like in the lashes, not just like on that skin part. Like I don't care if I'm getting it a little bit on my lid. I really want to build up that thickness there in the lashes and it really helps me get away with not really needing to use a liner on the on the lid um, if I don't want to. We're just gonna do something a little bit every day. I'm just using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam Palette. I'm going with some orange soda and this is a quick look. I might This is the kind of look that I might do like on a Sunday morning getting ready for church. I got something real special for over here. I actually still have the shadows that I used to use. Repurchased, not original in 2006, okay? Man, that blizzard that we had last week caused so many problems. The National Guard was called in. Cause this is like what I would do like on the daily to rush out the door. It might not be your rush out the door look. It's just my rush out the door look. We're gonna go with Sultry. So I just used Sienna and I'm just gonna use Sultry, which is more of the metallic shade in here. It's like a burgundy metallic. I'm just gonna pat that on. I'm not gonna try wetting it. I could use my finger as well. I mean, these days I embrace all brands basically. There we go. Drugstore, high-end, luxury, anything. No one brand has the corner on the market okay unique mary Kay, you know none of it so ugh. it's like having hair i had hair in my chair like when it's down in your shirt you're just like eh, you feel it you know i never used liquid liner then liquid liner was not in my life highlighter 
This is my favorite highlighting palette. It's Anastasia Beverly Hills and Nicole Guerrero. I'm sorry, it's not available anymore. Maybe you can find it on eBay, but it's like my favorite palette. Um, for this, I go with Forever Young and a little glow getter. And I always go a little bit over the brow and then down and just go like that. Go on, Joe. Oh, he can't wait. He's got to come see you. He couldn't wait. <laughs> the door was mostly closed and he made his way out. I love this mascara. So I'm using the Tarte Lights Camera Lashes. I almost always will take the highlighter that I use for my inner corner brightener. Okay, anything else? So as I've said, I use a lot of Mary Kay and I relied heavily on this little shade, Granite. And it's like a, I really liked it because it's like one of those shades that transforms, so it's sort of silvery and sort of bronze or brown. And so I would take it like that all over the lid, and then I would take a fluffier brush, and then I would run that in the crease and let it look a little bronzier. You know, so it has like that dual chrome sort of characteristic. And back then I would dare to take metallics up into the crease because hell, I didn't freaking know. I didn't know anything. All right, and then this is Sweet to Pink, the matte, pale, pale pink. This is my other absolute favorite Mary Kay shadow, and I've kept it forever because it's lasted forever, and it is the navy blue. It is so pigmented, and if I didn't know any better, I'm just wetting my brush. <laughs> if I didn't know any better, I would say it's a pressed pigment. I mean, they never said anything about that back then, but... I would swear to you that's what it is. It's so pigmented. Um, but it does, it's not gonna stain like one. So we're gonna use that at the bottom here. And back then, tight line, water line was not something even discussed. Okay, so back then I always used the Ultimate, the Mary Kay Ultimate Mascara. I did at least have the navy thing down right because navy actually will make the whites in your eyes look whiter. Um, and sometimes what I would do is also take that navy since it's so dark it's almost has like the black characteristic to it and so it makes a great upper liner as well never did bronzer highlighter wasn't a thing um highlighter wasn't a thing powder um what else can we do i don't know how much i did on my nose take a little bit of highlight to the nose because that's something i always do now just trying to and then that's kind of it and then we'll hit the lips Sometimes I do use, use a lip liner. I'm not really a lip liner kind of person. For years and years, I just would do like my face face, but forget the lips or just never paid much attention to the lips. What a huge mistake. And I would just like wear gloss throughout the day, probably because I've had such dry lips for so many years and I couldn't figure out how to get them to not be chapped and cracky and etc. She's a little tight. Um, but now it's definitely something that I try to keep paying attention to. So I just threw on the soft, I don't know, we call them soft matte Too Faced Peach lipsticks. And this is not a Sunday Fun Day. Love this one. It's a great nude setting spray. This is in my Urban Decay. Mm, that is great. And that's it, you guys. This is my now and this is my then. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I think it's so interesting to see just how makeup has evolved, how it's evolved in our own lives, um, how our, our education and our knowledge and our applications have expanded over the years. And for me, that's like, gosh, I don't know, like the last 15 years. So it's a long time. Gosh, I think I use everything. It's, I mean, my tools are different. The products are different. You know, the application is different. You know, things that didn't exist then and they exist now. So that's pretty cool. It's, it's wild and it's really, it's really cool to see. So 
I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, make sure to let us know by hitting the like button if you enjoyed it. And please don't forget to subscribe, hit that button and ring that bell. It's always appreciated. That way you'll never miss any of my post notifications. Until next time, have a great day. Bye.